Hello and welcome everybody, it's Karen. I'm glad you're here because I am playing with this Leafy Garden 3D embossing folder from Paper Rose today. Uh, it's one of their new ones. They've got a few new ones that have just come out. So, But this one I really like. It's quite a nice dainty pattern. So I am misting on both sides my piece of cardstock. I've cut it a little bit wider for this technique just so I had somewhere to put my hands. And with my Spellbinders Platinum 6 machine, I find I can get this through with just the base plates and the embossing folder, but each machine is different, so do what you need to do for your machine. But I will never get tired of seeing these pieces of cardstock come out from the embossing folders because it's magical. They go in flat and they just come out beautifully raised and textured, and I absolutely love that. Now I decided with this one to add some different shades of green to it, so I'm just using my foam blending tool uh, and I'm trying to go as lightly as I can but you will see that there ends up being some green in the background and I was okay with that in the end. I mean technically you're trying to just get the raised edges but it's pretty tough with a foam blending tool. Now that wasn't quite enough green so I went back in uh, just with a couple of shades of green and a small brush and I'm just brushing a bit more on. So once that green ink was dry I went in with my Versamark ink uh, and just lightly brushed over the tops of those raised surfaces. Uh, and I tried to go in different directions just to make sure I was getting all the edges properly. Uh, and then once that was on, I just took a small brush and I'm brushing on some Perfect Pearls, uh, that's called Perfect Gold, that color that I'm using. And I'm just going over the entire surface. Now it will get into the, the crevices there, as you can see. Uh, which didn't hopefully have Versamark ink, although I probably got some in there. <laughs> so I'm just going back with my clean paper towel and I am trying to brush it out. If, if it wasn't inked up with Versamark ink, it should just brush off. So there you can see, now it's very hard to see the gold on this go around. And it's there, in real life it's there, the camera doesn't show it very well. But I misted that just quickly to help set the perfect pearls. And then I went over a second time with the Versamark ink. Again, brushing in different directions, just trying to get the raised edges. And I brushed a second layer of the Perfect Pearls on top of this. And now the, the gold will come up a little bit better. I'm going back in though with my paper towel to just, just try to get it out of the crevices. So I think you can see the gold a little better now. But that still wasn't enough for me. So I'm taking a bit more of the Perfect Pearls, putting it on my glass mat. And I just added a little bit of water to it, enough to make a paste or a, a, a slight liquidy solution. And I'm mixing with my paintbrush. And then I just went back in brushing this onto different leaves. And you know, I really wasn't worrying about being perfect with any of this. There's so much greenery there. And you know, greenery in a garden or a forest or wherever, it's always different shades. So I really didn't worry about this too much. I just wanted a bit of extra gold and shine on all of this. So now you can see on the left side where I've added the extra gold, there's quite a difference between the left side and the right side I found. Uh, and I thought it was worth doing that. Now here, you can see how green that background is. It's a very soft, pale green background. And I was okay with that, but I thought I would try this on just white cardstock. So I'm not inking this one up other than with this Versamark uh, ink pad. And again, just running over it in different directions and then applying the Perfect Pearls over top. And I, you can see in the crevices there, there's a bit of it. So I'm going back in with that paper towel and wiping off the excess as best I can and then doing a second coat again, just like I did with the green one. Uh, and definitely the second go around, it's it's darkened up quite a bit, but there's still some in those crevices and where I've got my Versamark ink, it's gonna stay. Um, so I missed it that, and then I went back in and I am doing exactly what I did with the first one, adding the liquid uh, Perfect Pearls over top with a paintbrush. Now I know somebody's gonna say, well, that's way too much work, so I'm timing it. <laughs> so it's 8.50 in the morning here and I'm starting, I've done a couple of the leaves, but I just kept on going through the whole thing, 
really just putting it on the leaves. I didn't worry about the stems or the vines. Um, and there it is, all done, slightly different shades and different areas, and I really liked that. And look at this, it's only three minutes later. So <laughs> to me, it was worth the extra step. So there's the two side by side. Definitely there's a greeny tone to the one on the left and a bit more of a gold tone to the one on the right. Um, but I like that. Now, mica powder comes in different shades and colors. So I'm just showing you here. You could do these, depending on your embossing folder, there's so many color variations you could choose from. So you could do a rainbow if you wanted. Okay, so I'm going to turn this one into a card. I've trimmed it down. I think it ended up being six and a half inches tall. But I wasn't sure how wide my card was going to be because I'm going to put those little metallic gold strips down. So I just folded my eight and a half by 11 inch piece that I've cut down to six and a half inches tall in half. So it's five and a half inches wide, but it won't stay that wide. So I am just gluing the first strip down along the fold line. And now I'm making sure that my embossed folder is going up and down the right way and gluing that one in place next to that strip of gold. And here's the second strip of gold. So I'm just putting these on the side. I didn't worry about the top. But now I've got everything in place. I'm just trimming off the excess cardstock there. Now I'll have everything listed below, but I have this small congratulations uh, die cut, which I've die cut from the same gold and matted on some vellum. And I've also die cut it, I think that was four times from white scrap cardstock. And I did that because I'm going to be adding dimension underneath it. I've got these wonky stitched circle pieces. I've cut three of them from scrap card and I've glued them together. And I've got these uh, little foliage two uh, branches here. I just like them with the leafy background. Uh, but I'm putting those onto that white circle and then I'm going to glue the circle to, that was just a scrap piece of uh, gold metallic card that I had in my stash. And I'm just centering that uh, well, I actually shifted that down a little bit lower. I didn't want it right smack in the middle. Now here's where that extra layering of the congratulations comes in handy because with all that dimension, you can see that that right hand edge and probably the left will not stick down. So I'm looking there through the vellum and I can see that where I'm gonna put the congratulations, the U is about where uh, it goes off the circle. So I've just trimmed off the white stacked layered at the U and I've put glue on this and now I can layer that in behind right over the the gold metallic congratulations to add that depth to the back of it so it will adhere to the front of the card and then I just needed the bottom left hand corner of the C and I'm gluing that one on in place and then I can put glue over everything and now when I go to stack this up it will layer up over those circles, those raised circles, uh, and will glue directly down to the card front. So I found with almost all of these uh, pieces I was gluing on to the embossing folders, I needed to let the glue really set up, and so I'm just putting it under a glass block there. Okay, now this is my second card with the green. Had I thought this through, I would have die cut this before I embossed it. But I didn't think it through, so <laughs> I'm paying the price. So I have die cut that semicircle out now, and it flattens out your embossing. And I, you could leave it like that, but I didn't want to. So I'm piecing together this semicircle back into together, uh, and just taping it in place with low tack tape. And now I'm going to notch it back into the embossing folder. And you want to make sure it's going the right way, which it's pretty impossible not to get it in the right way. I think because it the pattern will be different but it's like when you die cut something it will notch in place and so I just ran that through again and the raised edges have come back now again I hadn't thought this one through <laughs> so after putting that craft foam in place I thought oh wouldn't that be nice to put a little gold circle there so I die cut that and I'm now going to go backwards putting this in underneath all that craft foam that I have just put in place so that's all I'm doing there. I'm gluing it down, lifting up the foam, trying to get that gold in the right spot. And then once it was there, I just trimmed off the excess. And then because I've raised everything else, I put a little bit of uh, double-sided foam tape in along that edge. Now I was using uh, an adhesive backed craft foam scraps. Uh, if you didn't have that, you'd just put glue down. 
or you could use scraps of cardstock to layer it up if you want it layered. Um, you don't have to, of course. And here I'm just putting it onto my card front, just lining up the edges. And I had these little gnomes sitting on my desk, and so I think they're adorable. Uh, so I wanted to use one. So I'm just tucking this one into that opening I've got there, fitting it underneath that gold. And uh, I've got this happy die as well. I've cut the letters from it and I trimmed them off. So normally it would be attached and I just cut them down. And I started with the Y, I spaced everything out first, started with the Y gluing it down. You can see it's all under blocks. And now I'm just adding the H to the front of that. Um, ended up turning him around. He seemed to fit a bit better going upside down. Uh, but then just put everything under blocks, let that all set up. And then I had this birthday uh, from one of the sentiment strips and I have it up on foam tape. And I was struggling with where to put it. So in the end, he ends up going off to the right just a little bit. So you'll see here, there he goes. So that's that card done. Now off camera, I had already done this green background, a second green background. And I've cut this strip out. I just cut it on the angle and I have that extra strip. So the top and the bottom there where it's embossed, I have stacked layers of scrap cardstock underneath that. So you can see there are three or four layers uh, behind there. I don't quite honestly remember how many layers now, but a few. And then that hello section is, is depressed. So I think you can see there, there's the raised dimension of the top and the bottom. And that hello I just cut from gold card, but I had this piece left over and I didn't want it to go to waste because I think it's really quite pretty. So I took an A2 size card base uh, that's four and a quarter by five and a half inches tall. And I just glued this on to the front of that and I'm putting little strips of that same metallic gold cardstock another one of those little Mother's Day gnomes and that little birthday sentiment and I added a few pearls in the end. So there's my two for one card out of that one embossed piece uh, and the green card and then here's the gold one at the end. So I hope you guys will give this a try. It's really quite fun to do. Thanks for stopping by and I hope you're having a great day.